Hello and welcome to the Down Under Visa Philippines to Australia podcast. Down Under Visa are registered migration agents based here in Manila, Philippines. And we have regular blog articles on our webpage which is www.downundervisa.com.au which are on the topic of visas from Philippines to Australia for Australian Filipina couples. That's what we specialise in. And plus other aspects of life in the Philippines, aspects of cross-cultural relationships which are important. And what we'll be doing now and with every podcast is that we will be going over one of the blog articles and we'll be elaborating on the contents of that. And today's podcast will be on the blog article topic, Visa Grant Notices, Read Them, No One Will Remind You. Okay, these are the Visa Grant Notices you get when a visa has been granted. And what we find characteristically, which seems to be characteristic of this particular age that we live in, is that nobody reads anything, even if it's something that contains very important information. People don't read what's there and they can get themselves into trouble. Now, monitoring important dates on visa grant notices. Now, contrary to the heading, this isn't a cranky post, uh, but I hope it grabbed the attention, which is what it was designed to do. This is definitely meant to be a sound warning to read important dates on your visa grant notice because literally no one else will. Fortunately, most of our clients heed our frequent warnings to read notices and take careful note of important dates as we see less mistakes being made now as there used to be. However, (laughs) it still happens and there are those who assume that, I mean we have around 700 visa grants a year that somehow we're going to plonk all the dates, all the important dates on a calendar and be there going, oh quick we've got to get on to John Smith and remind him that he's only got three weeks to go. Uh, we, do, we can't do that. It's not possible. You have to take some responsibility for these things. Now, mistakes, I'm talking about overstaying tourist visas and ending up unlawful. It happens. Um, not entering Australia by must enter Australia by dates. Some visas have a specific date that says you must enter Australia before this particular date. And all of a sudden you find that they never read that part and they didn't go and as a result they breached visa conditions and that's not a good thing. Uh, Not marrying in time for lodging partner visa applications in time. That happens all the time. Um, For an onshore partner visa you must marry before we can lodge it. And we find on occasions uh, a week before the tourist visa runs out and they go, oh... Oh, hang on, have it. no, no, we haven't married yet. Well, they've blown it. Uh, not marrying before partner visa, sorry, prospective marriage visas expire. Those are fiancé visas. You must marry within nine months of the visa grant. And on occasions we find somebody has let that go. Um, letting prospective marriage visas run out, doing basically nothing that's required and ending up being unlawful. Again, those visas last nine months. You have to get married and you have to lodge a further application, which is a simplified onshore partner visa application. People let that run out and then all of a sudden they don't realise they're now unlawful. She has no visa. It's the nine months is over, they have no visa left. And of course the old help, we have two days before the visa expires where they suddenly realise and we get people saying, Hey, the visa is expiring in two days' time and we haven't done anything. What can we do? Um, and often the answer is nothing. Get on a plane, leave. Not not far from ideal, obviously, but uh, all of this would have been saved by people reading the notices. So fortunately, as I said, they're not as common, so our warnings do seem to be sinking in. Um, and if you probably... If you've never properly read your visa grant notice, please do so, please do so now. It's not a very forgiving system. You run out, they don't care. You broke, you've broken the rules, you've blown it. Mm. You know, you are You could be on the next plane or you could even be locked up in a detention centre 
Either way, not very good. Now, the department, they say jump and you say how high? Or, how high, sir? Now, the department are there to guard Australia's borders. They are not a customer service organisation and the customer is not always right. Yes, of course, there are checks and balances in place and there are appeals processes in place. There's the Administrative Affairs Tribunal, Tribunal or the AAT, um, the right to appeal decisions to the High Court and even directly to the Minister. And there are expected natural justice provisions that you expect from a civilised nation, i.e. you are normally given notice of certain things and you know if you've broken a rule they give you a chance to explain yourself generally. Um, those things are in place, but uh, still. And, I mean, they're not a bad bunch, really. We, we treat them with respect and consideration. They show the same to us in return, but it, you, you can't treat them like the customer service department in, in Kmart and think if you raise your voice enough, they're uh, going to back down, because they won't. And they've got a set of rules to follow. Uh, most of those rules are written into Commonwealth legislation so they are law um, and this is the point there are some things where there is flexibility others there is none whatsoever uh, and you can yell at them till you're blue in the face and all you're going to do is make yourself unpopular uh, so there's very little flexibility some of the processes can be painfully slow and deadlines are definitely deadlines they can and will enforce deadlines with some fairly tragic consequences if you don't comply and yes we we do see these things happen we have we have seen people we have seen people where their visas run out and they end up unlawful we have seen people having to end up on planes and leaving in a screaming hurry when they don't want to it does happen now Jeff's specific warning of the day this was a warning of the day when um, when I wrote this article now, regular blog watchers will have read following articles about partner visas, um, i.e. subclass 801 and subclass 100. This is permanent partner visas, which is the final stage of the partner visa process. Um, now, these are applied for at the same time as partner visas, uh, which are uh, which, like a subclass 820, which is an onshore partner visa, subclass 309, which is an offshore partner visa. Um, we lodge them at the same time, as in we lodge an 820-801 or 309-100 we, at, at the same time. But the actual permanent partner visa side of that, they begin to decide these approximately two years after the temporary partner visa is lodged, in fact, after both of those visas are lodged. Now they used to inform clients and now they generally don't. Uh, on odd occasions they do but generally they are not doing that. Now around 18 months, two years ago they stopped sending out the formally predictable notifications. Every now and then they send a handful of them out and then they stop again. I think I saw one the other day but it was just yeah, very odd for them to go out. Nowadays mostly uh, no, they don't remind you and you're expected to have some idea about this. So uh, we do have blog articles, videos about that on the on the blog page, so uh, please have a look at those. Um, now, a couple of months ago when this article was written, received a notice from a client who had applied for their 820 in November 2015. Two years ca came about in... November 2017, all of a sudden they get a notice saying that they've given them 28 days to get the final requirements in for the subclass 801. Um, and look, fortunately the client did okay. They were reasonably, reasonably efficient, but I mean it did mean did mean a rush job. Uh, and again, as I've said in articles, if you are a normal committed couple who do all the usual, dare I say, expected couple things and it should be a matter of just putting it all together but if this happens to you and you have not put enough effort into combining your lives and I'm talking about the things that are necessary for a permanent partner visa 
um, to show that you are living as a committed couple. Things like joint bank accounts, joint purchases, etc., uh, etc., et things that show you're not just, you know, camped together like a couple of flatmates. Um, Millie and myself, we didn't have anything special. We had to rush around organising when we did it because we did all these things anyway. We already organised the the joint bank accounts. I couldn't handle me like saying, but that's your money. And I said, no, no, it's our money and here's your here's your card and there's the machine. You can get money out whenever you want. Um, we did all those things. We went out and bought things. We put both names on these things. We People knew us as a couple. We um, it, it wasn't a problem, but with some people, they do need a, a bit of guidance into putting these things together, which is why we, we will... We will help clients through this, and uh, when we do, they do very well. But if you run out of time, this is the sort of thing that can happen. So please check your visa grant notices. If you are due to finalise a permanent partner visa, then you need to get on with it. Now, this might be a one-off display of strictness, or it may be the way things shall be from now on. That's the only one we came across like that, however. Uh, well, you never quite know with the department. Uh, the fact is that is still that's a date you have to monitor, um, along with everything else which is on, which is on your visa grant notices. You must read them. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. I had a cough building up there. Now you must read the notices. You must make sure you understand everything that's on there. If you don't understand, for goodness sakes, ask us. But don't just don't just ignore these things. Don't expect anybody to remind you. Don't expect the department to go, oh, look, I thought I'd give you a bit of a nudge. I can see your your tourist visa's about to run out. They're not going to do it. Uh, it runs out. You are unlawful. You are in trouble. You've made caused yourself a major problem. Uh, note, note about tourist visas. If you, if you overstay more than 28 days, you're going to get a ban of three years from applying for any further tourist visas. So... You don't want to let that happen. And that happens through carelessness and people taking no notice of dates or expecting somebody else to do it for them. OK, well, look, I hope that has been helpful for you. And I hope, if you haven't done so, that you check out our website and you have a, a bit of a look over um, our collection of blog articles, which uh, plenty of information there on Australian visas from the Philippines to Australia, information which is pertinent and useful for Australian Filipino couples. And we look forward to uh, speaking to you again on the next podcast. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.